today, as we said that we'll be the last session of the world of electricity. So we'll just go to the general things. So last time we had the assignment uh, 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 that for the, you know, that did you read your electricity bill? How many units do you take in, in your home? Mega has given me and also uh, Rish, uh, Rishikesh. What about the others? Did you check what is your, um, uh, the, uh, the reading at home, the electricity meter reading? Rishikesh, it was uh, 246 and 253, right? 225, 253. Okay, 255 and 253 for mega, it was 346. Okay, and who else? Who else? Have, anybody had looked into it? Others? If you can put it in the chat so that we will just have a small discussion. So if you see, uh, like in mega's house, uh, Okay, when then this has to be very clear. Fine. Okay, so mega home it is three forty six um, uh, units. That means the three lakhs forty six thousand watts is being you kilowatt hour is being used in mega's house. Okay, and in uh, um, Rishikesh it is two twenty five thousand. Two twenty five thousand. Um, it is used, kilowatt hours is used. That is the energy consumption. So we looked into our, that one, that like, like if you use a TV, TV of 200 watts for uh, the four hours, we said that one, it is 240 watts into four hours. It was 880, that is less than one kilowatt. Like that, you have used like that 246 or 346 in megas. Or, you know, like that, you can say that. So once you reduce this consumption, okay, like the usage of TV or, you know, whenever it is required, only you would switch it on. Otherwise, what happens? This units will be used. The government has to give you electricity. It's all wastage of electricity, wastage of money. So all these equipments, when you use, it will take the energy for how much time you are using that one. Okay. And your parents will be built for that one. They have to pay for that one. Okay, so we have to do the energy conservation and check that, that and then monitor that one, that this month, how much it is used and in uh, next month, are you getting reduced for that? Uh, you know, that is either consumption reduced and also check like, you know, in winter, sorry, in, in uh, during monsoon season. Okay, that is, it's not much hot, uh, the hot. So, you know, number of the fans used this will be less, but in summer, that is in April and May, it will be high. Okay, so check maybe in June, July month also, what is the bill coming? See if it is less and see, understand why it is less because you might be using fans less or maybe AC, if it is AC is there, AC is less or anything related to that one, it might be less. Okay, so see that if it, that is the case and figure it out that how you can reduce the electricity. Okay, so that was for the assignment. Now, you might have seen when, when during the time of festivals, right? There is a lot of light decorations is done in the in in your place. You know how these lights are getting connected. Okay, there is think the call how these lights. Okay, these lights you know that it is connected by one by one. Can you see what is the difference between these ones here? If you see that there is lot of lights and you see only two wires here, right? There's two or three wires. But here you see the multiple wires are there. Why it is the difference? And sometimes you see, you know, that if one portion of that bulb light is gone, okay, that, uh, that one portion, the complete area is, the light is gone. Maybe one light is fused and the complete light goes. Why it happens and how it can be avoided. Okay, so there is a kind, there is in the light, in the, in the, you know, that when you connect any equipment to a circuit, okay, there is something called, we call it a series connection and parallel circuit connection. Okay, if you see the first one, you see the first one, this is the two wires which is coming from the supply. Okay, and it goes to the first one, then it goes to the second one. So it is connected in the, in a series. That's why this bulb sometimes, you know, we call it a series bulb. bulb. So this is, it might be connected like this, but in our house and all, even if the one bulb goes, the other room might not go, right? We don't connect it like this. Okay, we might be connecting it like, you see this one, the line, it is coming, the two lines which is coming, the first one is connected like this, 
it's like a T connection which is going. And the second one is right. So even if this bulb is, is fused, okay, it doesn't affect these ones because it is still getting supply, it is getting continuous. You see this one, if this bulb is gone, okay, this circuit is not complete because it is broken here. But in this case, what happens, it is, if this one is bulb is still gone, okay, the second one still receives the supply current and it is a continuous circuit. So in electrical, the most important is that one circuit has to be complete. I'll show you other graphical representation. You saw, see, this is the series, right? In the series, the current flows like this through the first one, first one, and then it goes to the second one. So it is continuous. So, and this is a called a series connection. So one passes after that. Second one, what happens? The first path of the current is like this, right? And the second path is like this. Even if one of this is broken, Okay, so what happens in this if it is broken? This is not a continuous circuit. So what happens? The current will not flow. If it is the current circuit is not continuous, the current will not flow. So in this case, what happens in the CD circuit? The complete circuit of lights which is connected to that one goes off. Okay, but in parallel, what happens? Even if this is broken, okay, the circuit is the fuse, the bulb is gone. Uh, the, that circuit is not continuous, but you see the pad, this one, see the, this circuit, this is continuous. Okay, so in this case, the, the second light, the, the first light in this one will work, even if the second light, but in the, in the CDs connection, it will not work because the circuit is not complete. Right? Okay, so now what happens with the CDs connection? So series connection, you see that I'm connecting this two batteries. Sometimes we see that some of your equipments will have two batteries or maybe three batteries. Some of them will have only one battery. So you know that one of the, 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 the AA, AAA, AA batteries, what you have at home, it is 1.5 volt. So when you connect in series, you know that it gets added. 1.5, if it is connected in this one, right? it is series, it is connected together. So it will become, if you do with a multimeter, it will have three volt. So in this connection, what happens? The, 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 this bulb will get, instead of 1.5, one, this one volt, it will get three volt and it will have more light is being produced by this lamp because it gets more voltage, more electrons will flow. That's our basics, right? More voltage, more electrons will flow. So the lamp will glow more brighter. Now, if you're connecting it like this, and if you measure with, uh, with a um, multimeter, you can see that this is a parallel connection, right? See in this one, the split card circuit there, this is split into this one, and this is split into this one. In this one, what happens when you measure? It is only 1.5. But what is the advantage of this one is, it can, prolong for longer time because this 1.5 other one is what happens 1.5 plus 1.5 it gets for a particular time but with this connection what happens you can get this lamp light for longer time it will be little it will be less brighter because it's only 1.5 volt and the electron flow is only related to 1.5 volt so it will be more um, the, it will go for a longer time so that's why when we use parallel connection, sometimes in, in your, you know, that in, in maybe in your toys and all those things, okay, it might be, um, it will be connected in, in parallel so that maybe it will, maybe three batteries will be there, you know, and it will be connected in parallel. So why? Because it can carry it for a longer time. Now, you remember that we learned about the resistance in the previous one? We learned about the resistance, right? The resistance, we said that one, if the length is increased, okay, the resistance will increase, right? That uh, resistance, you, uh, you, you might have remembered, I think in the first class we covered that one. If the length is, it is proportional to, resistance is proportional to, that was a formula which we learned, resistance is proportional to is the material, to the length, and inversely proportional to the area. Now let us see, if we have this resistance, three resistance, 
what happens, what gets, uh, you know. So this is a resistance of, of length L. This is L, and if we connect it like this, if this resistance L plus L plus L, what happens? It becomes resistance of 3L of length, right? So it is three times whatever the resistance of this one is there, it becomes three times the resistance in this length. When it is connected, it becomes three times, right? Because the resistance, it will be added up in this case. You can see that it is added up here, right? But what happens when so resistance increases with length? So the, if this is the resistance is R, this is R and this is R, it becomes that when it is combined, it becomes R plus R plus R, it becomes three R. For example, if this is if this is 10 ohms, if this is 10 ohms, this is 10 ohms, it becomes 10 plus 10. When you connect it like this, it becomes three times 10, that is 30. So it gets added because with the length is increased, resistance increases. Now in this case, okay, if I'm connecting like a parallel, like in this one, it is a series connection, right? I'm connecting the resistance in a series connection. So when you connect in series, the resistance is plus. It is R plus R plus R. But when it is, when you see this one, if it is connected like a parallel, the parallel connection, see what happens, the resistance is connected like this, right? Isn't it equivalent to increasing the area of it? Isn't it, we can represent this one like this, it becomes this much area is there for electrons to flow. So what happens? The resistance decreases. And how do we find out for that resistance? The total resistance of this one will be one by RT. Okay, that's the, uh, that's the scientist has to have this formula that how, because it is getting reduced. So it is one by R plus one by R plus one by R that will give one by RT. So whatever the value you get by addition of one by R plus one by R or plus one by R, we have to take the reciprocal of that one. Okay, then you will get the total resistance. So let us do some small example. Okay, so for example, in this one, which of the two circuits, okay, so in the circuit, this is one ohm and this is one ohm, right? So what is the total resistance of this circuit if it is connected in the series? You can put it in the message. What is the total ohms of this CD circuit? Please message in the, put it in the chat. What is this in the CD circuit? What is the total resistance here? So the resistance of this lamp is one ohm and one ohm. So what is that? Can you put it in the chat? I don't see anybody putting it in the chat. Yes, Rishikesh. Everybody, can you put it? Avantika, yes, Mika, Rishikesh. Yes, everybody gets that it is two ohms that we said that one. It is R plus R, that is one plus one, it is two ohms. And what happens in this one? Okay, what happens in this one? It is one ohm plus one ohm. That is one by one. Can you see that one? One by one plus one by one. What is the answer of that one? One by one plus one by one. How much is that? I want the answer one by one plus one by one. How much is the answer? It is? Hadi Priya has written, it is two ohms, that is right. So that is one by RT, right? One by RT is equal to two by one. So what is RT then? So what is RT then? One by RT is two by one. So what is RT? You can unmute and say also, if it is typing is difficult. What is RT? Yeah, RT, how much it is? We know we got it one by RT is equal to one, two by one. So what is RT resistance, total resistance of this circuit? 
what is the total resistance of the circuit? You can unmute and say, can you un unmute? Yeah, it is two divided by one by two. No, it is one by two by one was the one by RT. So what is RT? You can unmute and say if you want, what is RT? See in this one, we said that one total resistance 1 by RT is equal to 1 by R plus 1 by R. Here we have 1 by 1 plus 1 by 1, which you got 2 by 1. So what is RT in that case? Anyone? What is RT in this case? We know that 1 by RT is 2 by 1. So what is RT? The reciprocal of that one, right? Can you get it? Do you understand? What is it? I didn't get it. Okay, fine. Let's let's do it. Okay. What we said that one is one by one by R T one one by R one by R T is equal to what we have 1 by 1 plus 1 by 1, right? That is, that is what we got it. Let me enlarge it. Yeah, okay, you can see this one, right? Right? You can see 1 by RT in this one is because this is 1, this is 1, is 1 by 1 plus 1 by 1. Okay, so that means this is how we rewrite this one is 1 plus 1, right? 1 plus 1, 1 plus 1 divided by 1. Right? That's how when we add it, I think you have learned this one in the, I think it should be learned in fifth or sixth, right? So this one becomes two by one. So one by RT is equal to two by one. So what happens when we reciprocate this one? When we reciprocate this one, what happens? RT is equal to, that means RT by one is equal to one by one by two, right? So that means RT by one is RT only, right? So RT is equal to one by two. Is it okay, you get it now? Yeah, can you put it in the chat if it is okay? Yes, okay, so this is so what happens, the same circuit, same this one, when you, when you uh, do it in a series, it is two ohms. Same thing when you do it like this, it becomes half. So that the resistance on this one. Now, what happens to the current here? You know that one, this is the same. Okay, it is three volt. If this is also three volt. Okay, it is, this is a three volt. And here the resistance is two ohms, right? So what is the current through this one? What is the current through this circuit? You know that one, right? I is equal to, I is equal to V by R. So what is the current through this circuit? Can you put it in the chat? What is the current through this circuit? What is the current through this circuit? We know that one. I is equal to V by R. So here we know V and we know I, right? We know V, we know v and we know R. How much is that? Have you have the answer for that? 
how much is this in this circuit i want in the both the circuits what will be the current in the cd circuit and what is the current in the um uh, this one it is 0 0.3 0 0.3 by 10 no sorry this is 1 ohm plus 1 ohm rishikesh it is 3 by 1 plus 1 not 10 it is 1 ohm plus 1 ohm the resistance here is we said that one r is r in the circuit is r in the circuit is r equal to 1 plus 1 that is equal to 2 ohms right in this one so we know v that is 3 volt and ohms is this one so what is the current in the circuit can you put it in the chat please what is the this one in the circuit so in the series circuit what is the current here Yes, Rishigesh got it. What about the others? Can you get it? What is the current in this one? We know that V is equal to 3, that is 3, and resistance is equal to 2 ohms. So that means this is equal to 1.5, right? So 1.5 amps is the current through the circuit. Now what happens here? Here RT is 1 by 2. So what will be the current? is equal to 3 divided by 3 divided by 1 by 2 or maybe 3 divided by we can say 0 0.5 right how much is that so what is the current yeah that's fine yeah that's what i thought so okay uh, it is it is 1 ohm actually yeah correct it 1 ohm Okay, so what is the current in the second circuit in this parallel circuit? What is the current? Can you tell me what is the current in the this parallel circuit? What is the current in this parallel circuit? Here it is 1.5 amps, right? Here it is 1.5 amps. So what is the current in this one? It's simple math, right? Can you put it? What is the current in the second circuit parallel circuit? Nobody's putting in the chat. What is the current in the parallel circuit? We know, I, we, do, we know that it is three volt is the voltage and the resistance is one by two, which we calculated earlier. That is equal to 0.5, right? How much is that? Anyone? Yes, three divided by 0.5 is six amps. You see, six amps. So that's, that's the, you see the current in the same circuit, everything is the same. Every item used is the same. You see that the resistance is used, the voltage is used, okay? Everything in the same circuit, it is used. But current through this circuit, when it is connected in series, it is 1.5 amps. But when it is connected in parallel, the current increases to six amps because the resistance is reduced, okay? Resistance is, yes, it is four times, it is reduced. It's same things what we have done, it's same materials we have used. So what happens in this one, the bulb will blow brightly because it is getting six amps. So that's when the electrons flow is there, the energy flow is there, right? But in this one, because the current is only 1.5, it will be brightest. So now comes out our question, this one, which one of these two circuits have the brightest bulbs? You know it now, right? Right? The parallel circuit will have the highest, the brightest bulb. Okay. So that's what the resistance is. So what we need to understand is when the resistance, when it is connected in series, it gets added. 
So what happens to the current? Current is inversely proportional to the resistance, right? So current reduces when it is connected in series. But when it is connected in parallel, more electrons can flow, right? That is less, less resistance to the electron flow. So when the electron flow increases, the current increases. So the current flow will be higher. And how we find out the resistance in this one is 1 by RT is equal to 1 by R plus 1 by R plus 1 by R, right? That's how we found out in this one that 1 plus 1, we did it. Okay, 1 by 1 plus 1 by 1, it's a 2 by 1, that is 1 by RT. And we change that one one into reciprocate it and do it, we got it, right? I hope this is clear. Let's go to the next one. Okay, now the question time. What kind of circuit is this? Is this a series circuit or a parallel circuit? Can you identify, put it A or B? I want everyone to answer this one, please. What is this circuit? Series or parallel? Yes, everybody can understand this is a parallel circuit, right? Because the current goes, the first path is like this, second path is like this. So that in case if one is failed also, there is no problem with that, right? Okay, now this is a little more natural scenario. Which is CD circuit in this, A or B? Which is CD circuit? Which is CD circuit in this? Yes, everybody gets it, right? Because if you see here, this is the first path for the circuit and this is the second path for the circuit. But in this one, there is only one path for the circuit, so this is it series circuit. Good. Okay, so I just wanted to sh show you that uh, representation of this one. This is the battery. Those who didn't understand the battery and the first bulb, it is like this, it is connected. Second bulb, it is this, how it is getting connected. But in this one, the battery is here and the first bulb is connected like this. Then it goes to the, from the uh, next terminal of this one, it goes to the next bulb and it is connected like this. So this is what series circuit is, right? Now, how do we measure this current and voltage, right? We said that when we know that voltage, uh, what will be the voltage, what is, what is voltage, what is current and all, okay? How do we measure this one? How do we know that how much current is flowing? We cannot see it, right? We cannot see anything. So that's what we use a multimeter. Maybe in your home, it might be there. But that's a way that how we measure the current and how we measure the voltage, right? If you see, if you know that if your water meter, if you see that in your house where the water connection is coming, there will be a water meter. See how it is connected in the pipe, okay? If you see in that one, that it will be connected in series to it. Why? Because it, it should know that how much water is flowing through this pipe and reaching your home, okay? So water must, whatever water is passing, it should get it into this one. Similar way, we always compare it to the water flow, right? Similarly, to measure the number of electrons flow, we have to connect the ammeter. Ammeter is the one which can measure the ampere, okay? Ampere, we have to connect it series to that one so that we can get the measurement of the current flowing in that. Agreed? Now, so this is a multimeter, maybe you might have seen at your home because every house, we should have this one. This is one of the basic things which everybody, every house should have. So in that in case we have a problem, if one plug is not working, don't do it. You have to, you know that it has to be done in the, with the safety precautions. So let the parents, my, ask the parents if you have the multimeter at home, okay? And ask them to show in your, uh, this one, don't do it alone, okay? So this one that we'll connect this multimeter so that it is connected like this, and we can measure the, the current in this one, we can measure it, okay? Take a battery circuit, maybe your toys, maybe your brother's or sister's toys also, like the car toy and all is there, no? So in that one, you can measure the current what is passing through that. So this is how it is getting connected. See, it is a series connection, which goes and get the, what is the current in this one. So for example, in this one, you know that in this reading, if it is 1.5 volt and we do the ohms, if it is O1 ohm, you will get the current. But in the in case, if you don't know the resistance of your circuit, you can find out, you know that the battery, battery, you know that how much is the volt of that one. And if you connect the ammeter to that one, you can find out 
what is the resistance of the that circuit which it is getting connected okay similarly the voltage voltage we always did it through the water pressure right the pressure of the water when the water flowing or this one that's what we did it we we, we, we the analogy we used similarly so so this one water pressure how it is measured we put a pressure meet this one if it is there and we put it like in a it is you know that it is connected like this so it means it's connected not to in a series way you know we measure it what is the water pressure there so in this case if it is very high in this one we know that water pressure is high you can see the meter reading it is at the highest point but in this one it is partially filled only okay so in this one you can see the pressure is low so in this one so what this is how the we measure the water pressure similarly for the voltage also we will measure it across a point okay we will measure it across this point what is so it will be connected like a parallel connection to the circuit you see this is the circuit and this is the voltage actually this resistance very high the current will not flow through that one so it will measure it here how much is the voltage across this term that's how the voltage is getting measured so what happens we will measure it like the voltage if you took a battery okay if you have multimeter at home and uh, you have the small battery measure that one across that one you will get the voltage reading but you will not get the current reading because current reading has to be connected in a full circuit where it is and it is should be in a series uh, series of that one so if you measure like this you can find out what is the voltage of the circuit so see see that it is connected like a parallel parallelly to the circuit right so this is how we measure that one so this is how the analogy of this one this is for the ammeter and this is the voltmeter connection which we will use for the measurement okay so the question time now the current in measured in what is the unit used to measure the current amps volts ohms or coulomb what is that one the current is measured in amps volts ohms or coulombs can you put it in the chat please yeah yes rishikesh avantika we know that amps is for current volts is for voltage ohms is for resistance and coulombs is for the charge and you know, the electronic the electrons has a charge and that is measured in how should we put the uh, put an ammeter in parallel or in series ammeter should be in parallel or in series a meter should be put in parallel or in series hari priya and hrishikesh is the answer for the second one no i think it is for this one right here yeah. okay so what is the answer for this one uh, for a meter should be put in parallel or in series hrishikesh is putting a it should be connected in parallel is that right a meter should be connected in parallel or in series in parallel okay mega also saying parallel let's go what is this how it is connected is it connected in series the meter is connected in series or in parallel in this one how it is connected is it connected to the circuit in series or in parallel a meter is the one which we said that one we will measure the current right so is it connected in series or in parallel right yes everybody has got it first time wrong meka shikesh and hari priya right so let's go back to the this one we said that one a meter we said that one the water it should be connected in the circuit that is it should be connected part of the circuit so this is we we said that one the series circuit is what series circuit is is like this if it is connected part of it parallel it will split the circuit right so the ammeter is ammeter is connected in series you get it shrutikesh hari priya meka and everyone 
those who have right it is connected in series you see it is connected in series a meter is always connected in series okay okay so we should how should we put this one now time for voltage voltage is measured in voltage is measured in volts watts or coulombs voltage is measured in a ritikesh a mega yes volts yes chakki a yes that's right right so voltage is measured in volts power is measured in watts right and a voltmeter should be placed in dash how in a circuit in parallel in series i think these are the two options which is correct so in the power voltmeter should be placed in a circuit in parallel or in series hari priya i think she has written for this one right a in parallel this one so the voltmeter should be placed in voltmeter should be placed in parallel right a meter current measurement should be done in the, the um, this one but this one uh, but voltmeter should be always connected in parallel to the circuit so that now last may this one uh, we talked about the frequency right we talked about the frequency and there was a question actually there was a small mistake in that one that's why i wanted to clarify that in the frequency is you remember the frequency the rem the frequency we said that one the how the cycle one cycle okay the one cycle how it is goes and one cycle you know this is one cycle right how many cycles per second is frequency right that's what we studied last time right so the one cycle if it is two cycles we said that one it is 2 hertz 2 hertz in one second but in our in in kerala in india and all we have 50 hertz that means 50 cycles is there in one second right so now this is one cycle so the frequency means it is number of cycles per second but in this one there was this option was the option b actually it was wrong it is not frequency the time required to complete one cycle okay the this one what is the time required to one cycle it's not frequency right it is it is called if other other called period which i didn't take it yet so this is called one one the period that is the time taken to complete one cycle and number of cycles per second is frequency right number of cycles so in this one there is two cycles that is frequency so actually this one was this option was wrong and i put it as all of the above that was wrong so actually this should have been this option should have been number of cycles in one second okay so i just wanted to clarify that one this is wrong actually this option is wrong okay so this are then only this this one so this is number of cycles in one second time required to complete one cycle is the one time required to complete one cycle is time required to complete one cycle is frequency oh sorry period okay that is the time required to complete one cycle number of cycles per second is hertz that's why 50 hertz or 60 hertz means 50 times 50 cycles are there in one second now how does the electricity reaches home in the first class we learned about it right that it is generated and then it is transmitted and then it comes to our home so this is a simple representation of how it is we go we saw in a graphical one so first is the generation part right that the electricity has to be generated in some place so where in our in our country there is or any in this one there will be lot of power plants will be there where the electricity is generated and we don't have in every every near nearby our home there is no power generation it might be there few of them here and there in the in, in our state or in the country different places and it will be generated there from there it will be transmitted to our home let us see how it is happening okay so it will be generation then i told you there is um, uh, there will be transformers we we'll look into that one what is transformer and the distribution okay so first let us look into what is this generation okay in the generation okay 
what happens in the generation is there can be different type of electricity generation okay it can be chemical energy like in um, uh, you know that uh, where we have the coal or the uh, sorry the heat uh, heat energy or the kind of, sorry uh, so what happens the chemical and uh, what are the energy the energy for maybe the nuclear one or maybe the water one or in the thermal this one it is basically the chemical energy so this chemical energy that is converted into heat energy you know that they burn that one and produce heat out of that and that heat will produce steam that heat converted into heat energy that steam is used to turn a turbine okay turn a turbine which will be the kinetic energy the uh, the movement of uh, the moving energy is kinetic energy right so this one it will be rotating a turbine which will in turn rotate a generator and this generator will generate electricity there is a lot of details into that one that how it is being produced but this is the basic thing okay so in a thermal a thermal power station the coal or many different types of this one is used the heat of that one produced from that one it is converted into steam and which is which will in turn turn a turbine and it is converted into uh, from the in the generator and it will be connected to an it will be connected uh, turned into an electrical energy so what happens you see the first it is a chemical energy it is converted into heat energy then the heat energy is converted into kinetic energy and then it is converted into electrical energy okay that's how the electrical energy is generated so its generation is very huge thing so you see this is a thermal one of the thermal power plants picture i have got it so you see this is so huge area where this is happening okay this is a huge plant the further energy for the power station where, where this electricity is produced it is huge things you see this is a complete area is this thermal power plant so this is basic this is navelli power station the fuel used is coal here now this is you know in the, the nuclear power plant this is tarapur nuclear power plant in that one the nuclear this one energy is used to produce the the produce the heat and to the turbine and it is converted into electrical energy and this is here it is gas is used bs this is the fuel is nafta uh, where is the, the bses kerala power limited now this is a diesel here in a, in in our in in doha and all i mean qatar so here we use fuel based because here fuel is more cheaper to get it so it depends upon the country to country and place to place which fuel is easily available they will do it okay and the hydro the most of in if you are not kerala and all you will might be knowing about the hydro power plant the idki power plant and all those things there it is the power plant is the water is used let us see how the water is getting converted okay this is an idki what how it happens this is the generator you see the generator it's not a huge it is a big thing the generator because it has to get the power to lot of people right so many houses so many industries and all it has to provide so it is not as huge it's a very huge you see see this man this man is only this is one of the generators and he is so small in front of it such so as huge equipment it is a generator so now in, you can see that how the generator is i can just explain how in idki and all the power is produced you know that idki dam the water is stocked like this okay so the water there is lot of water in this one it will be stored in the reservoir that is what idki dam is doing from that the water flows through it which this is a turbine which is which will when with the water is flowing this gets rotated okay because of the force of the water which is flowing because you know the water has the force when it is higher it is have like the voltage it is having a force so because of that force this turbine gets rotated when this turbine gets rotated what happens this generator inside the generator it gets rotated i'll i'll explain to you what is a generator okay so just in the generator gets rotated it produces what generator does when it's the you know the with, with the rotary motion of that one it produces electricity okay so the generator so you see that that idki dam if it is this is the idki dam the water flows through it a turbine which will be moving which in turn will rotate it inside this generator which will produce electrical energy from that electrical energy it is sent to a transformer 
then it is sent to an, uh, the transmission grid, you know, that transmission grid we, uh, we see on the way, then it reaches to our home. Okay, so this is how the electricity is generated. So we finished the first part, that is where is the generation. Now we have this substation, right? I told you the substation, what happens because this has to travel so much of kilometers and kilometers. We need to have, it cannot, uh, if we put it at the voltage, uh, it is, uh, you know, economically they have, scientists have proved that one, it is better that we do it at a higher voltage. That's why we use at home, we use only 240 volt, right? 240 volt. But if you see the substations and all, it might be 11,000 volts or 22,000 or even 400, 400,000 volts. So there are substations like that, which will increase the voltage to uh, that much voltage, which is required. So this is, you might have seen maybe on the way when you're traveling and all this type of, uh, so, you know, that installations. So if you see, this is a transformer. This is the transformer which converts from one voltage to another. Or maybe near your home, you might have seen some equipment like this. Maybe when you go in the car or maybe when you walk, you just look into around. Maybe you will see a transformer like this. And sometimes you say the transformer, you know, that it might be, it's not, um, uh, you know, the transformer is burnt and you will not have electricity maybe for a full day. Sometimes you might hear. So that is what a transformer, which is near your home. So what a transformer does is, I think the transformer, there is two windings. I'll not go into details of this one. So it is either raise or lower voltage. Okay, so it is something like this. Uh, if it is sometimes we give 415 volt here, it will be increased to 11,000 volts. Okay, so that is called step up transformer. So what happens in the electric generating station because it has to travel a long way, we use a step up transformer. So whatever it is produced, it may be just produced in 415 or maybe in 11 kV, it is transferred to, it can be transferred to higher voltage. Okay, whatever it is, but not a particular voltage, 415 to this one, if you're giving here a different voltage, it will be stepped up to that particular according to this windings. Okay, now the step down transformer, it will be here, the windings will be more. So if we give here an higher voltage, it will give lower voltage. So what happens in our nearby our home, we need lower voltage because our equipments work only at 240 volt, right? 240 or 415 volt, that is the three phase. So in nearby our home, we will have 415 volt. Okay, so this will be step down transformer. The transformer you see near the post and all, that will be a step down transformer. So the incoming voltage will be high, output voltage will be lower. Okay, so this is what happens in a step up. So here it will be a step up transformer so that it can travel long distance without an issue. And when even it comes near our home, it reaches the, this one. okay. So this is what, I don't know, do we have, yeah. Now, the last one I want to cover here is, we talked about motors and generators, right? We know about generators and motors. What is this motor and generator? You know, you might have seen for the car when you were small, you might have this car. How does this one runs? How does this one run? Or maybe your brother, if your girls, brothers or sisters, or maybe because you might see this, how it is running, right? Every this one, it is having a small motor is there. If you see in this one, this is a small motor, which is there, which is making, which is rotating this wheel and it moves, okay? So that is the function of the motor. What does a motor do? It makes the things or it is a rotating part. It will have so that it will make the rotation. So in this case, what happens in this toy car is because this motor, it rotates the wheels. When the wheel rotates, it moves forward. Maybe in a mixie, in a grinder, what happens? The blade is getting rotated, right? So what happens? The blade is rotating. Whatever comes in its way, it cuts that one. Okay, so it gets uh, your uh, onions or whatever it is is put into the into the grind. This one it gets cut because it is rotating with that blade. The blade is getting rotated by the motor. Okay, so that is this is the application of motor or maybe in a, you know that if you have a well in your home or maybe there is even if in an apartment you might, you know, there is a motor, which is how the water is coming to your home. There will be each house will be having a motor, which will pump the water into this, okay? 
So this is a lot of applications of motor. We use motor in our everyday life. If you see in your home, there will be a lot of places where you use motor. And maybe the generators. I'm not sure that generators you might have seen or not, but in sometimes in a, in a big, uh, like in a, um, a small industrial places and all, inverter is not sufficient. You know, that will not have enough batteries to put it. So they might have a generator. What happens if the current goes? Okay, so this generator is used for that one. So now let's see, just quickly go through this one, that electric motor versus electric generator. What is an electric motor is, okay, when I pass an electric current to this one, okay, when I pass and there is a battery here, when I pass an electric current to this one, and this is two magnets, right? When I pass it to this one, it becomes, it will start rotating. So when I'm putting an electric current to the circuit, it will rotate this rotating, this, um, this um, uh, you know, that emission. So this one, what happens? It is, it gets rotated. So that is electrical energy is converted into kinetic energy. This is what happens in all the motors, whatever the household, whatever the toys, toy car, or whatever it is, it is, this is the motor getting used. There will be two magnets, there will be coil. When you pass the current through that one, when you switch on this one, that you know, there will be a small switch on your toy car. If you switch on that one, the current passes through it and it gets start rotating. Okay, but in an electric generator, it is different. Okay, electric generator, what happens? I'm rotating this one manually. There is no battery to this one. You see, there is no battery to this one. I'm rotating this one manually. You remember that we used in the power generation, I used water to rotate that one. Okay, so water to rotate that one, I mean, this one, it is current is produced. So what is electric, electric motor and, made, and electric generator is? In electric motor, when I give electricity, electrical energy to that one, it is converted into mechanical energy. But when in electric generator, when and I use a mechanical energy to rotate a thing, any mechanical energy to rotate, the current is produced. That is what the basic difference between an electric motor and I think it is complicated, but I'll show you how this happens. Okay, so this is how when the current is passing, Okay, this started, this start rotating. This is what, how happens in a motor. It gets, it gets, uh, you know, because of this is both magnets, that thus you will, in, in the electromagnetic and magnets and all, you will learn more. Okay, so this is what happens when the current is passed through it. It gets rotated. This is how a motor, the lot of windings will be there. It will get, start rotating like this. And when something is connected, if the wheel is connected, the wheel will rotate. If the electric, this one blade, the grinder blade is done, it will start rotating. Your fan motor, okay? The blades are connected to that one, it will start rotating. This is basics for all the motors which we use it every day in our home. Now this is a generator. What happens in a generator? What happens? I am moving this one forcefully. Okay, there's magnets, both magnets are there. I'm using this one, this mechanical energy, I'm using this for, to rotate it and what happens in that one electrical energy is getting produced. Okay, so this is the basic difference between this one motor and a generator. So what happens, this is uh, uh, just the basics of it. I'm just, um, uh, what is the difference between the both? Because we use it this one every day, especially the motor. This converts electrical energy into mechanical energy. So when the current passes through that, it starts rotating. But in a generator, what happens? When I start rotating this one, this will start rotating and it will produce the current in that one, which can be measured in this. This is the galvanometer. So this is, it is measured in that. Now current carrying conductor that experience a force when it is, so this conductor will experience a force. This is a little bit detail, which you will learn in the electromagnetism when you learn in the higher classes. Okay. Uh, I think it's a little bit more for this class. Okay, the current carrying conductor that experience force when it is kept in the magnet. So you understand this one motor, this is getting electrical energy is converted into mechanical energy, but in generator, it is opposite. Mechanical energy is converted into electrical energy, right? So that is for this world of electricity, uh, uh, this one. I'll come back to that, okay. So first we learned about 
the world or the electrons like the flow of electrons normally it flows in a different when a force is that when we apply the voltage okay it will start flowing in an organized pattern which will allow the electrons to flow which results into that in the current so the current is the flow of electrons voltage we said it is equivalent to the water pressure so this is the the pressure with which will make the electrons flow okay so voltage is when the voltage is there it will allow the electrons to flow in a circuit it is equivalent to the water pressure how we measure if the more pressure is there more electrons will flow if it is less uh, less pressure is there less voltage is there less electrons will flow right now we learned about what is the resistance resistance is which will which will hinder any material when the electron when the current electron flows okay that material will obstruct the flow of this electron that is what is called resistance right any obstruction to the water flow maybe that this might be a dirt but in this one it is the resistance which will hinder the flow of electrons but it's not a bad thing it is a good thing which we use it for many different now we also learned that electrons that uh, that uh, what is number of electrons if 6.2 into 10 raised to 18 electrons pass through this point at one second okay how many 6.2 into 10 raised to 18 electrons it is called one amp of current so when we say that one 0.5 amps or this one we can see that how many electrons are passing through that one when you measure with a multimeter you can see how many electrons are passing through that okay then uh, yeah the resistance we said that, that unit is ohms and when this resistance what happens when it's collided it will be converted into an heat energy or whatever it is required okay or maybe light energy it is required and the relation between voltage current and resistance was given by ohms law by ohms so george ohms and it is i is equal to v by r or maybe r is equal to v by i or v is equal to ir you can further remember this this one this is how we can with this three figures i is equal to v by r we can solve most of the electrical problems okay this is the basics of electricity right the ohms law we learned it we learned about the fuse in your home there is fuse which will be restrict actually this is uh, you know that restricting the current if, which is coming you know, that too much current should not flow to our home right what happens if too much current flows like uh, lightning happens too much electrons is flowing our equipments will get burst so to avoid that one that we have a fuse at home the electricity board put a fuse so that it is in case if by any chance maybe some malfunction this man made things right it might be a lot of malfunction happening maybe there is some reason maybe the verb transformer is not functioning properly it might have a surge of uh, current might be there so our equipments will get damaged because of that when we have a fuse it might go in case if there is a fault okay then circuit i said electrical circuit it should be always continuous that is the basics of an electric circuit if it is not there will be no flow also we learned about shock right shock in that one we said that one that if it is normal condition it flows through the equipment there is nothing flows but sometimes if it is malfunctioning the equipment is not working and all those things there might be current flow through our body okay so don't tell this one always take precautions always wear shoes and shoes or you know that or may stand on a mat when you are using the electrical equipments right that's why we said about that and it has to be like the why this is not getting um, electrocuted because there is no voltage across this one we said that one for electrons to flow there should be a voltage difference should be there right otherwise electrons will not flow here what happens the voltage across this one is different than different so when it is connected there is an electron flow through this bat and that's why the bat died but since there is no electron flow there is no voltage difference between the two feet of the layer because it's too close okay there is no voltage difference so there is no electron flow through the crow and it will not get a problem right we learned about electrical power it's like mechanical power of doing work any like produce light or to for the motors to work or anything so the electrical power is like and it is measured in watts that's what we learned it in this fan right when we increase the uh, voltage or the current the fan the power increases so the electric power is increased right and then we learned about ammeter and voltmeter 
Uh, that's what we learned it today, that it has to be connected in series or parallel, and we learned about series and parallel circuits, right? Then we learned about resistance connected in series and parallel, right? Connected in series and parallel. When it is connected in series, the resistance gets reduced because there is lot of area for electrons to flow. It is increasing the area. Also, we learned about alternating current and uh, direct current, right? In the batteries, what we have in the AAA batteries or AA batteries, it is direct voltage. Sorry, uh, direct current. It is only, it's not very current. But in alternating current, which is reaching our home, it is an always an alternating current. All our equipments are designed to take alternating current. Except what happens, what is in the, you know, the mobile or maybe the PC and all those things that are using still the direct current. Because it's more sensitive. Okay, so that's what we have learned in this world. Uh, so, uh, Hrithikesh has asked some question. What is the RPM in the, in the picture before? Uh, what was the question, Hrithikesh? Can you tell me RPM? Because we didn't uh, talk. RPM in that rotation. Space. Yes. I yes. The rotations per minute is that one that in the motor that how many rotations that you know that's like this one you see the rotating equipment right the rotating part of the motor how many rotations it makes in per minute so for example in the car and all it will be 1500 rpm right if you've seen the car you can see that what in, in the dial of the car dial you can see what is the rpm of that so that is uh, you know that you can see that what is rpm of your car so that means that motor is rotating that you know that 1500 times maybe the motor which is there in our um, uh, uh, you know that the electric uh, this one and all um, the, um, the grinder and all if the, i don't know what is rpm i'll check that one you maybe you can go and check if it is written on that one how much rpm it is rotating that is how much rotation is made per minute okay so that is what rpm is that the question Ritikesh? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Okay. How this produce electricity trapped in a battery? Uh, you are asking how is the electricity in a battery? Uh, yes. How it is captured? How it is produced? Okay. In Capture, a battery. Captured. Yes. In a battery. Battery. The electricity is produced with chemical energy. Okay. There is chemicals which is there inside the battery, which will be, uh, I don't have the picture of that one. Maybe I'll add it for the next, there, this one. So the battery, it is a, basically, it is the chemical energy, which is getting converted into electrical energy. Okay, like we said that one in the generators, different types of generations, we learned it, right? Like the coal, it is produced uh, in this one and the water nuclear energy or like, like that in the battery, the chemical energy, you know that chemicals are stored in that one. There's a negative terminal and a positive terminal on that one. And because of this chemical reaction inside the battery, the electricity is produced, okay? That is how the electricity is produced in a battery. And it will be when it is connected, that time it will be, you know, that chemical energy, the chemical reaction happens and it will produce the electricity in that. Recharging battery in the normally what happens in the normal battery, once this chemical energy is, uh, you know, that chemical energy reaction is finished, okay? You cannot use that battery. You have to throw off that battery. But in rechargeable battery, you can reverse the chemical, you know, that chemical, you can bring back to its normal so that the chemical reaction can take place to produce electricity. So that's what happens in a rechargeable battery. That's why it is more expensive because the chemical reactions used in that one is different and it can be reversed. So what happens when a river, river rechargeable, um, river, this rechargeable batteries, we can charge it. So the chemical energy is restored in that one so that it can produce electrical energy. But what normally in a normal AAA battery and all, once this chemical energy is converted into electrical energy, that's it. We, it is, you know, that we can, we can only throw the batteries. How chemical takes the electricity. Actually, I'm not prepared for that one for the chemicals. I need to 
uh, get this one, you know, that I can, I can share it in the chat, this one with some pictures, okay, so that it can be explained more uh, how the battery is produced. I'll add it in the chat, okay. You can, uh, maybe tomorrow, you can uh, log in and I'll explain that one with the pictures, how this chemical uh, reaction takes place and how the electricity is produced. Okay, if I explain, it is basically the chemical reactions which is happening in the battery, which gets converted into this one. It is having negative terminal and the positive terminal. You know that one, right? That battery is having negative terminal and the positive terminal, and it happens the chemical reactions and it happens with the electrolytes. You know that the batteries for the inverters, there is the electrolytes, there is electrical load. So that's the chemical and reaction take place and it getting stored. 